Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about nuclear binding energy. And so we finally reached the point, after all these years of physics, where we can use the E equals mc squared equation, which is quite famous and everyone seems to know, even though most people don't even know what it means. So the E is your binding energy, and that's the total binding energy. And the M is your mass defect, and I'll explain what that is a little bit in a second. And your C is your speed of light in a vacuum. So the mass defect is the difference between the mass of the nucleons when they're separate and the mass of the nucleons when they're all combined together. Because when they're combined together, if you measure the mass, it's actually lower than the total of all its separate parts combined. And this difference is caused because of this thing called binding energy. So when you bind all of the different nucleons together, you actually release a certain amount of energy. And this is what's known as the binding energy. And it's the amount of energy you would need to put in if you wanted to separate out those nucleons again. So a couple of key definition style things for this. We're going to look at the ones at the bottom. The first one, the atomic mass unit U is obviously, you'll recognize this number as it's, um, your mass of your protons and neutrons and that type of thing. So we call it one U is that unit. So a one atomic mass unit is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Okay. But we what we also know is that a mass defect of one U would be equivalent to binding energy of 931.3 and that would be measured in mega electron volts and that's a really useful conversion to use rather than having to flip through using your equals mc squared equation you can just use this nice conversion relationship where one mega electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 joules so the other thing you need to know about for the as in the a2 course is about nuclear fission and nuclear fusion and the reasons why they occur and knowing when they occur. So for this we need to know about a slightly different principle. So what we need to know about is this thing called binding energy per nucleon because this is what governs how stable a particular nucleus is and it also explains why certain types undergo fission and certain types will undergo fusion. So binding energy per nucleon is what you do is you take the binding energy of which you can calculate using the equations we looked at on the previous slide and you divide it by the total number of nucleons in the result in the resulting atom of that and you work out this binding energy per nucleon. And what we do is we plot a graph of this binding energy per nucleon against the number of nucleons and that tells us something really useful. So let's find one of those. So here is a sketch of said graph. So on the y-axis we've got our binding energy per nucleon in mega electron volts. And we've got our nucleon number along the bottom. So there are a few key points to see here. First, you can see here you reach a maximum around, it's around about the atomic number of 56, which obviously corresponds to iron. So this has the highest binding energy per nucleon, it's, for, it's around about 9 mega electron volts. And that means it is the most stable of all the possible nuclei. So all of these in other places on this curve are trying to get towards that position, because everything's always trying to get more stable. Okay, so that's the first key point. Second key point if to the left of that maximum point, we see that all of the different materials in there have a lower binding energy per nucleon. So they're going to try and move towards iron to try and become more stable. And what they need to do to do that is increase their nucleon number. And they do this by fusing together. So any a sort of type of atom or element that you find in this section here undergoes fusion to try and become more stable like iron. Now if we look on the right hand side here all of these again have lower binding energy per nucleon. That means they want to try and get a smaller 
nuclear number this time because they have bigger than this magical 56 value. So they're going to need to try and get rid of some of their extra nuclear number. So what they do is they undergo a process called fission. So you're splitting apart into different um, what are called daughter nuclei. So the original one is the parent. And they split into two daughter nuclei which will have lower nuclear number. So that enables them to become more stable and getting closer to this 50, glorious 56 nuclear number which gives you the most stable type of atom. And this is what explains why certain materials like uranium and, and thorium and that sort of thing all undergo nuclear fission, which is why we use them in reactors. And this is why you, in stars you find your hydrogens, your heliums and that sort of thing because they have very low nuclear number, so you need to combine those two things together to try and increase the nuclear number to try and get towards this magical iron level, level of stability.